we can, we off. cannot go deep, we cannot go deep. Yeah, back off. I'll flash, I'll flash. I'll kill you. So never mind, flash on us. I'm bad, bad. It's on, it's on. It's really bad. Actually, it's fine, it's actually fine, it's actually fine. It's actually I'll fine. I'll attack the Vega, yeah. Just, just try to leave, just try to leave. Wait, Ashraf flashes, by the way. It's strong. I can fight, can I win things? Can I, can I, no, 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 no flash, no, no flash. I'm behind them, I'm behind them. If you just like, jump out, I'm in behind I'm them. I'm tipping, I'm tipping, I'm tipping, I'm tipping. I'm tipping, I'm tipping. I'm gonna come behind them. Try to run. Oh, there's no flash, there's no flash. There's no flash, there's no flash. Probably all of them. There's no flash. Okay, Bar has no flash now, I guess. Java no flash? Okay, Java, can I go? They are tipping behind me. I think you should run. No, 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 you should run if you can. Oh, there I can. That's the LTB. Okay, nice. There's no way. There's just no way you leave, right? Good job. Oh, it's the best land in the world. We just heard G2's comments from their game against Suning in the Sounds of the Game presented by Bose. And we're about to get into the second game of this best of five between G2 and Gen G. G2, well, it was a close early game. I think Gen G, you know, getting those first three dragons would have felt that they were in a really good position. And then G2 were able to find picks constantly around side lanes and just take the game away from Gen G. Yeah, I, what I think is really interesting is. Uh, um I read a great tweet from uh, Kelsey where she talked a lot about how G2's kind of doing what they have a habit of doing, of kind of defying or defying the meta, where it's like, well, you don't have to fight for every Drake. You don't have to actually contest and go for all these team fights. You can actually just wait and look for these picks and play towards this, like, global comp. And uh, I think it was uh, very well done by G2. When we think back to G2 of last year, playing side lanes, strong mid game, that was actually what they were very well known for. Their early game has always kind of been debatably very bad. Um, and I think that they kind of, uh, you know, they just mitigated that weakness. And I I think that they uh, did a great job in the mid game. So we'll see how things change in game two. We heard from Yamato in the post game talk about how they wanted to see the Orn ban removed and actually replaced with a Camille. But it looks like that they're going to keep to what they know for the time being, with Sintra and Orn being taken off the board and G2 looking to do the same with yeah, their so set and Lucian. Same bans on both sides so far, with the Graves being banned yep. away here by Gen G. We'll see if G2 decide to switch things up. If they don't, Renekton! will be removed, and maybe we have the uh, start uh -huh. of a run back instead. Rascal says, anything you can do, I can do better, Okay. as he locks in the Camille. Cool, I like this response from Gen G. They're saying, listen, the bands were the problem, the picks were. So let's get ourselves the Camille. If you're going to take all these off the board, you would imagine that, excuse me, G2 is going to look to respond with the uh, Volley Band later on in the draft, but they could still get themselves the Twisted Fate and the Nidalee if they wanted to. Yeah. Still very powerful champions, a very strong combo. They're actually going to lock in the Lilia, though, okay. We did see a Lilia from Yankos in the group stages. The question is, what are they going to pair up with it? Will we see an AD mid laner, or will we see the Twisted Fate once again for G2? Right now, having a little bit of a think, the Shen Ooh, will come in. Okay. So the expectation here is that Wonder will pilot that in the top lane. However, support Shen is a thing, and Mickey is the sort of player that would bring out support Shen. So there is a bit of flexibility in this pick. Of course, uh, it does work well into the Camille. You can block a lot of her damage by putting down your Spirit's Refuge. And there is the Nidalee answer from Clid on Genji. Whoa, okay. Wait. <laughs> this is Wait a minute. This is just come from the first <laughs> game. Yeah, but this is also considered to be a very powerful draft on the current patch. <laughs> oh, it will be really funny if Genji's like, Wait a minute. Your comp? My, My comp. comp. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to lock in the Twisted Fate, all right. Genji now get to showcase, well, Anything you can do, we can do better. Yep. Um, so let's have a look and see how G2 respond. Because, yeah, they're going to give up the Nidalee. They're going to give up the Twisted Fate. Of course, G2 do have the Shen to try and match some of the global pressure. The question is, will they go for a Galio here? Um, they'll be lacking a little bit in terms of damage. Nope, they're going to match it with the Silas. We saw this come out from Knight yesterday uh, on Top Esports when he played up against Fnatic. You can steal away that ultimate at level 6. You can look to try and match some of the Twisted Fate roams. I do think that right now he doesn't have the best ultimates to steal. Camille, not that bad, but Nidalee, really not that helpful. Yep. So we'll see how Genji round out their comp and if there are any more valuable picks that uh, Caps can look to take away. And the question is where we go in terms of AD carries. With the Callista getting banned away, Genji last time took away the Ash, took away the Senna. Um, but this time they will say, well, we don't want Mickey going onto his Pantheon and having that ability to get to a side lane as quickly as he could with the Grand Starfall. 
And uh, I wonder if Ash is going to be high on the list here for G2. We've I, yet to be banned away. I feel like Ezreal might be slightly higher on the priority list. When when you have this comp from Gen G, you can see how easy it is to be able to look for picks, attack yeah. that bot side of the map, especially if Gen G can get themselves a strong two versus two. And I think that Perks Ezreal kind of makes the most sense in terms of being able to play safe, be able to play weak side, play a little bit more defensively. But if they feel that the Shen is a strong enough protection, they may just stick to what they know. They're going to go for the Jin once more. Gives you that little bit more range when you want to get into the fights. The curtain call can help pick people off. And we already saw the combination between the deadly flourish and any damage from anyone else on your team, just locking someone up from long range. However, Gen G here, I'd love an Ash. Like an arrow into a destiny, into a gold card, into a hexagon or maiden. Like that is feeling so strong, but instead they are looking towards the Ezreal. A little bit more safety, as you said. In the end, don't talk about it until it gets locked in, Medic. Like, Ruler is known. He played a lot of both Ash and Ezreal during yep. the regular season of the LCK. Both are big comfort picks for him. And I think that he was pretty happy to go either or. I think Jin G wanted a little bit more pick potential in their composition. We saw it from the Jin from G2 last game. Now we're going to get to see it with the Ash Arrow and the Tom Kench. So, when you kind of look at the team fight power, not the strongest of Gen G, the Nidalee and Twisted Fate become a little bit harder to execute later on into the game. Ooh. Ooh, and I was going to say the problem is they don't really have a strong frontline or engage, but this is where I think the Leona is exceptionally valuable. Going to give Gen G a lot more agency in the bot lane, two versus two and it also makes it much easier to play through this lane as well. So G2 are going to try and respond by offering that protection with the Tom Kench, it looks like. So they will have the Tom Kench and Shen to at least face check for G2 when looking to contest and uh, challenge some of these neutral objectives, but they don't really have a reliable engage tool. Perhaps the Silas is able to steal away something like the Leona ultimate, maybe the Ash ultimate as well. Maybe if the Silas gets into melee range as the Shen come on top, they can use that as an opportunity. Maybe they have to try and use a pick, but I think that Genji, in terms of their ability to actually start fights, come the mid-game, look for picks across the map, they have a very well-rounded and strong comp to be able to do that. So I'm excited. I think that Genji already demonstrated that they can get big advantages in the laning phase against a team like G2, who's just in the mid-game where they kind of got picked apart. But with a comp like this, they can now answer and they can be the ones to be very aggressive come the mid-game. And I'm excited to see if they're able to do it up against G2, who did it so well in game one. Genji needs to show us just that little bit more map play in this game. It can't all come down to team fights, although they do have a relatively strong team fighting composition as well. G2, on the other hand, a little bit mix and match for this team. Picking the Silas to make sure you dance with the Twisted Fate. You don't have that sort of super sustained damage in a fight from something like an Ezreal or an Ash. You have some ability to lock down, but also some ability to disengage. It doesn't feel as cohesive a composition as the one in game one. Well, I think the early game will be a little bit slower, but we'll have to wait and see. I definitely agree with you. The composition is not quite as obvious yeah. as compared to a game one, but I think that the game plan is to try and mitigate a lot of the, the cross map plays that Genji is looking to try and set up. And I do think that G2 do have a strong two versus two on the bot side of the map with the Jin and the Tom Kench. So we'll have to wait and see what they're able to pull off off the back of this. I think that uh, there was a lot of criticism towards Yankus' Spears last game. Yeah, he missed but, quite a few. But I still think that he played very well. I think that one of the biggest things that I saw from Yankos uh, that was a departure from the group stage was that he tried to save lanes that fell apart in the early game. So like we think about that level one flash, in the group stages, what Yankos would do is he would path to try and help them get through what is now a very difficult lane matchup. But this time he didn't, he abandoned his bot lane and he yeah. said, it's fine, I'm gonna keep playing cross map on the other side of the map. And he focused on himself rather than on his team. And I think that for a player like Yankos, that's a very big deal because ever since he's been on this G2 roster, he's been very much playing towards his laners rather than playing for himself. So that is what I think was a big evolution and a, a big stand up for him. We'll see if he can do the same thing again on the Lilia because now he's in the counter matchup. Now he's going up against Clid on the Nidalee. This again is a big comfort pick for him and something that he can be very selfish on. He can use some of the priority that he has in his lanes to go into Yankos' jungle, steal away a lot of those camps and be as obnoxious as Yankos was in the previous game. You have to remember the last two times Clid and Yankos met, it was Yankos who came out on top 3-1 in Worlds uh, semi-finals last year against SKT and 3-2 at MSI as well. So Clid will want a little bit of revenge. G2 setting up something down towards the bottom lane here. 
Looks like Mickey is trying to be a tasty catfish, a little bit of bait perhaps as G2 step all the way around. Life and Ruler have pushed forward just a little bit. Now there is a small narrow window you can walk up through the bottom lane here and wonder will have the taunt. Life being propped on with that auto attack. There's the slow, flashes away from the deadly flourish. Strong level one from G2 already getting the flash out from life. They were able to do this in game one and they were able to burn Rascal's Flash, but of course the immediate response from Khalid is to get a bit of vision up towards the top side. Rascal's also there to assist him. They do have this blue, uh, blue ward, red ward from G2 to spot that one up. And they're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no buffs will be stolen today. And uh, they're gonna look to try and deny some vision. One that has to be careful though, because you can see that Rascal lying in wait in that tri brush. Looks like Clod is going to start unassisted on his blue buff. Of course, Nidalee with the spear does get a big burst of damage to start off that buff. And it's interesting to me that Jankos has decided to start blue himself. Often on Lilia, uh, especially when I play with Ender, he likes to go for the Razor Beaks because you get so much out of clearing those multi-minion uh, camps uh, from your jungle talisman. You get all of that healing, you can just sweep them away and uh, it keeps you very healthy throughout the jungle, but Jankos here opting to be assisted by his bottom lane, meaning that he can work his way towards that top side of the map. I am interested to see... Ooh, Rula. Life has no flash, remember? He's going to dive in. Of course, no shield of Daybreak, no stun on the Leona, only the Zenith Blade at level one. So we can see a bit of trading in the bot side, not that surprising. Wonder also not getting the better of Rascal at this level one point. Not really that surprising because of how you can use the Camille W to be obnoxious. Rascal has the stun. Oh, but another engaged bot lane. Life ignited. Mickey looking for the acquired taste. Life is ticking Ooh. down, but he will be able to survive. Mickey ticking away as well. Perks does have heal in this matchup. Here's Yankos on his way down as well. And Life, of course, has no flash. There's the heal. They try and get Life out. But watch out, Eat Life. Perks, Zenith bladed on. Life survives. Yankos unable to take the kill. That's a double for Ruler in the bottom lane, in the top lane. Rascal kills Wonder. Wonder kills him in response. Ruler will fall to Yankos. But what an incredible play from Gen G. Everything comes together for the bot lane of Gen G. And huge props to Life there in the last second diving on top of Perks to create a gap between him and Ruler. Actually stunning Perks up. He was still only level one and that was the biggest problem for G2 in that situation. Not having the level two, not having that additional health, those additional stats, anything really put them behind and allowed the bot lane to come through. Let's have a look at this Axe replay from Rascal and remember that he did get level two first. As the bot lane action was taking off, he is able to get the stun, lands it onto Wonder and then he just commits to the fight. Is able to get good damage down. Wonder still only level one. And then Wonder just goes back. He's trying to get the level two mark. Oh, he goes for the all in. And then, of course, the shield comes through. Wonder very quickly rises. I don't have the damage for this. Oh, and then the, the flash underneath the tower. Still, there, definitely a worthwhile kill up there for Rascal. But we didn't get a replay of the bot line uh, fight, unfortunately. Wow. And. I really want to give credit to Life there, considering he didn't have Flash, it should have been an easy kill for G2 in the bot side of the map, but once again, we're seeing Ruler and Life kind of come out ahead in the two versus two. If it wasn't for Yankos, that bot lane matchup could have been a lot worse, but now there's no summoners anywhere. Only mid laners have their Flashes and TPs up, Medic. That could mean even more action towards the bot side of the map. Clint has his flash as well, and Wonder is trading here in the top lane once again. Rascal looking for the knockup. There it is. Wonder forced back. Jankos on his way. Rascal, remember, he's got no flash. He's got no hook shot. And the chase is on. Watch out as Jankos dives forward. Teleport coming in. Jankos looking for the kill, but can't quite get Rascal. In the end, he gets him. Blue, uh, Blossoming Blows will get the kill. BDD chasing with the TP. Has a stun guard locked in. Will flash forward. And Jankos goes down for his trade, but Caps is having none of this. He wants a little bit more of an action. BDD, no flash, no way to get away. Is Wonder coming in as well? There's the taunt alongside the stun, BDD Forbes. Whew. Okay, so a lot more action in this early game compared to last game, Medic. Already four kills on the board for both sides, and well, where do I even begin when it comes to breaking <laughs> that down? So basically what happened is Clid was able to get double scuttle. That's important to note because right now he's been taking advantage of the fact that Yankos went for early ganks. He then looks at the top side of the map because Rascal has a pushing wave in and he wants to try and get a pick onto Wonder. But Jankos is there to counteract Rascal who didn't have Flash. Then BDD TPs in to actually mitigate or like turn the fight in their favor. But BDD is forced to use the Flash because Jankos, keeping the passive stacked, uses that movement speed to just stay out of BDD's range. This, because he commits the Flash, means that Wonder can come down, Caps can also collapse, and it ends up being a kill. He's going to sit on... Uh, Two rings. Why about Dark Seal? Dark Seal. Uh, of course, they don't stack in terms of the stacks, but you do get that additional healing off the back of it, so still valuable to stack it up. Meanwhile, Wonder 
is kind of the one that's lost the most in all of this because there was a huge wave that just crashed into the top lane tower. You can see that he's 10 CS down, but also a level down and his level six is gonna be heavily delayed. Meanwhile, BDD has just hit level six. He's roaming bot and he's looking for a gank. Cam's looking to try and join them, but he can't get in there in time. Mickey already down as Ruler takes the kill. BDD will fall as well. Caps didn't steal away the destiny. Now Ruler is getting chased down just a little bit. Life can look for the re-engage. Six second cooldown on that stun. But it ends up being a one for one. And this time it's BDD who dies in exchange for Mickey. In terms of experience, gold, everything, much more worth yeah. for G2 because you're then going to give Caps the opportunity to push that wave in. He's then going to look for a roam himself. Very common Caps play. Let's see if he can actually pull off a gank here. 3v3 in the bot side, more action medic. He has the hijack perks, trying to step forward, cleared in the right place to pounce out of the jungle, can come in. Enchanted Crystal Arrow has been stolen away and they've already locked up Ruler and now cleared is next on the menu. The arrow is still available here for Caps if he wants to land the stun. Gets it immediately. Swell Seed's going to follow it up, but no level 6 yet for Yankos. The dive is available, but G2 decide against it for the moment. They are distracted I don't think they do, medic. by the minions. Life able to dodge to the side, but the Tongue Lash comes out under Clint, who gets caught with the abduct. Life underneath the tower, still getting chased down here by Caps, who decides he doesn't need to sacrifice his life for the kill. Wow. Okay, so that's what Caps then uses his priority for, to punish Genji as they try to push in that wave and get the wave to bounce back. This is why the BDD death was so impactful and Caps utilizes it well. BDD tried to look for roam up towards the top lane. He will be able to get a, a bit of farm himself. But wow, a lot of kills happening in this early game. And, you know, I was talking about at the beginning of this game how Yankos went much more towards focusing for himself. But this game, he's all about the ganks. He's yeah. really trying to punish the fact that so many summoner spells are being used, but also he's trying to counter gank a lot of what is happening on the map. And I respect BDD utilizing that ultimate the moment he hits level six, but that one punish ends up working out so much better for G2. Have a look at this from Caps' point of view. You can see he consistently landing the stuns there onto Ruler, has that arrow stolen away, and is able to get, catch onto Cleared at point-blank range. Yeah, good patience there. And they were they had the wave in a really good spot too, because they only had to clear a few more minions out to be able to commit to this play. And then a good set of CC is able to come through, they're able to get that initial kill. They wanted a little bit more, but then Caps realizes, at ah, my W still has a nine second cooldown, probably not worth diving at this point. And the important thing about that for G2 as well is, remember, Ruler got such a sizable advantage early on. He was two kills up as Rascal is taunted when they're diving underneath the tower. But Ruler was in such a strong position. Now Perks has been able to get some of that gold back. He's got a CS lead. He's got himself a kill. Yes, he's still behind in the pure 2v2, but he is not being forced underneath his tower regularly. You can see, in fact, Life has decided to come up here to join the rest of Genji on the Rift. Oh, Clay diving in. Yankos just able to survive. Gets hit with a final spear as Clay takes him down. And a little bit greedy there from G2 as Genji had set up around this Rift Hole. Yeah, really good punish from uh, Clid and BDD there. I think BDD had Ghost on his... Uh, Spellbook? Spellbook, yeah. And I think that he used that to actually close the gap between him and Yankos, and they were able to get the punish. Of course, in this situation, what we saw last game was G2 looked to try and make a cross-map play happen. So they would have either uh, looked to try and make a dive happen bot or uh, perhaps even go for a Drake, but they instead tried to contest. And this is the best case scenario for Genji because now they can set up for the Drake themselves. They're going to be able to steal away some of the camps from Yankos. And Clid now putting himself in the position that Yankos was in in game one with a huge CS advantage as the mid laners look to trade. Yeah, and Caps just jumping forward onto BDD. The Kingslayer, of course, heals you up more the lower you are as life dives in. But good devour from Mickey will keep perks safe for the moment. And uh, very even game here, Vedius. 400 gold between the two teams, six kills to seven at the nine and a half minute mark. And we're starting to see those first items on their way. Looks like it's going to be a Blade of the Ruin King possibly for Ruler in this game on the Ash. Work his way through the Shen. Of course, Silas gets pretty tanky as well, depending on how he decides to build. It's pretty interesting there how they actually gave a lot of the mid lane farm over to Yankos as it was Caps threatening the enemy rafters. Uh, you can see that with Cleared on the bot side of the map and with Destiny coming up, this is a situation where Genji is definitely looking to set up for this Drake. They're going to drop all, a couple wards over the wall. BDD has just looked to reset. His TP will be up relatively soon, as many G2 members are going to reset. Ooh, the Storm Ray is already coming through for perks. Definitely a big item purchase. Going to give him uh, a very potent early game spike. But with the push in bot, I think Genji are going to have the priority on this objective and they may look to just start this one off. Let's see how G2 respond. Wonder has TP and ultimate. Rascal is the same. Will they contest? Yankos will look for a swell seed. Uh, 
Chucks it out, misses life and ruler straight through the uprights, and Clid should just be able to take this dragon. Yanko stepping forward, but uh, unable to get there in time. And this is kind of the story of G2 games. We talked about it a little bit in game one, Vedius, but G2 really don't go for those objectives. It's all always Gen G going for the objectives, and G2 just don't like the early dragons at all as they look for a fight down here towards the bottom lane, but can't find the connection onto Ruler. Oh, there are those dragons that end. you were yeah. talking about, I, I'll be honest, <laughs> the screen wasn't responding to my touch. <laughs> I was wondering whether I'd... Uh, Lost feeling in my fingers. Right, talk us through the stats, man. So as you can see, G2, first dragon percent. It's the FD at the top. Only 30% of the time does G2 go for the first dragon, whereas Gen G much more often go for that first Drake. G2 get about half the dragons in all of their games. Gen G get about 63%, about two thirds. And Barons, G2 actually one of the worst Baron taking teams at Worlds, at Worlds groups. Uh, whereas Genji consistently go for them, and now Genji look for a fight in the mid lane, but Mickey is here and Perks is here, and oh, oh. Lid is no longer. He's gone back to the founder. BDD tries to flash away, but there's no escape. The Solar Flare! Stopwatch from BDD underneath the tower. Perks looking for the fourth shot. We'll get it. Rascal comes in from the side. The arrow's going to land from downtown as well. Solar Flare stolen away there by Caps. As Life looks for the re-engage. Ruler stepping forward. There's a stun. And now Ruler's been put to sleep. Underneath the tower, he is dozing off. And Yankos will happily accept that kill. Rascal able to survive as two players from G2 go down, but they managed to pick up four. Wow. So everyone in the mid lane here, Medic. Wow, what a crazy collapse and crazy team fight that G2 are able to come out on top of. I believe that was four kills for two at the very end of it. Like, I'm going to need a replay to back that one out because where do we even start? So initially, this is BDD and Clid looking to get a gank onto Caps. It looks like these overextended, but Shen ultimate plus the Tom Kench ultimate actually allows G2 to collapse first. This is where they overcommit. A really nice stopwatch going to come through from BDD here as Wonder flashes underneath the tower, and then Life tries to get the stun. But Rascal's already making his way down. The Ash Arrow comes through, and at this point, I think G2 could have just stopped and backed off, but in typical G2 fashion, always actually Life that flashes in to try and get the re-engage and perhaps that was a little overzealous because he then beats his AD carry in and it allows G2 to get a couple more kills. Good ultimate at the very end coming out from Rascal to lock Wonder underneath the tower, but it's G2 that's coming out ahead in the kills. Oh, it's Genji looking for the pick. Rascal trading onto Perks here on the bottom lane. Mickey actually had to flash forward. Deadly Flourish does not connect the swell seat. It was wide as well. Curtain calls have been brought down, but uh, the trigonometry not working in Perks' favor as he couldn't quite find the angle. Yanko's still on the chase. Hook shots should just allow Rascal to escape. Yanko's ultimate also still on cooldown. Wonder, I think he's going to die destiny. here. 4v1. It's not a fair fight as Wonder's locked underneath this top lane tower. Puts down the Spirit's Refuge. Now he's going to try and get away. Goes in with the taunt. Lands it onto BDD. Wonder locked up with the Solar Flare and the kill goes over to Clint. Wow, so he actually decides to try and taunt BDD. I think he wanted BDD to get tower aggro, but he actually didn't end up getting it. Meanwhile, Rascal dies on the bot side of the map. So I have a couple questions. <laughs> the first one is I am surprised Wonder decided to stay underneath that tower. Credit to him for being able to clear out that wave and buy a little bit more time. Perhaps he realized that there was no way that he was getting out of that situation. So instead, he just wanted to stall for as long as he could. Maybe he thought he could outplay it. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure. But my other question is what exactly happens bot lane? And we're going to get a replay to find out. Rascal actually just tries to base underneath his tower. And he has no way to get out. Yanko's tanking up the tower to allow Caps to deal the damage. And they're able to trade one for one in the end. G2 don't get that bot tower, but it is overall one tower for one on either side. G2 for now sitting with the gold lead, but we're getting a very different game compared to what we had in game one. Man. It's a lot more chaotic, Vedia. Yep. So we are 21 kills at 15 yeah. minutes. Both teams taking equal amounts of plates. And one of the number I have to highlight is the fact that uh, Caps Obviously, last week went on a website, got onto uh, the nearest library and said, hey, I want a library card because I need to book out this Medjai Soul Stealer. 14 chapters are written in it so far. It's got 11 more to go before that's fully stacked up. How long have you had that one in the books? For? I've been working on it a while, Benny. <laughs> been working on it a while. Uh, so it's great that you brought up the mid laners because we need to contrast what BDD and Caps have kind of brought into this game. I think what's really interesting is that there's been a really big debate, I think, around BDD and Caps, especially prior to the tournament. Many were saying that, like, you should rate a BDD higher than Caps, you should rate Caps higher than BDD, but I think that they've just been very different players and they're often very difficult to compare. I think what's great about BDD is that he's been known as a very lane-dominant mid laner. I think that he's very consistent and very reliable, whereas Caps is all about roaming. He doesn't care that much about one versus one. He's much more about 
about playing for his team. And like you can already see how often G2 likes to play through him, whereas BDD is a little bit more isolated. Just look at the difference in the jungle uh, proximity and how much more resources Caps gets as a player. And you can also see it in the CSD. BDD is much more about the lane, whereas Caps just kind of abandons farm in order to play around the map. And I think they've been very difficult to compare. But in this situation, BDD's taken on the responsibility of trying to roam around the map yeah. a lot more. And he's actually been punished pretty consistently. There was that one play down towards the bot side of the map where he ended up getting collapsed upon. There was that one play in the mid where he was working with Clid, but it was G2 that do what they have to do, and they immediately collapsed onto Caps to keep him safe and actually turn the play in their favor. And so far on this Twisted Fate, he hasn't ever been able to find huge early game advantages for Gen G, but we're entering the mid game now, and this is really where this Camille Nidalee Twisted Fate combo comes online, and we'll get to see how Gen G utilizes it because this is where G2 is able to punish Gen G so heavily in game one. Yeah, as soon as you start to get those mid lane towers down, as soon as you make longer lanes in the top and bottom lane, you have so much more opportunity to get in behind your opponents, to use that destiny, to use the mobility of Nidalee through the jungle, and that's what Genji will be looking to do. Yankos is going to equalize the Dragon score here. The Ocean Drake goes down. It's another Infernal Soul, Vetti. Today is the day of Infernals, it would seem, as uh, that will be uh, the Dragon stacking up. But with both teams only at one at the 16 minute mark, it's a long way away before we get towards that soul point. So we can see a lot of major items now coming through as well. You already talked about the Mejais for Cats, but he's now completed the Hextech GLP. We've got the Rod of Ages. Trinity Force is a big purchase for Rascal as well as he hits level 11. And Wonder also already completed the Titanic Hydra a little bit earlier on, but let's see what he goes back to buy. The important thing is level 11 for Wonder, level 11 or 12 rather for Cats. Having two points in those ultimates is extremely valuable, specifically for the cooldown. The ability to use it more often, the additional shielding that Wonder's going to be able to provide, the lower cooldown down and more regularly the Caps is going to be able to steal those ultimates, but the same can be said for BDD. He has his ultimate up a lot more often, which means that Genji can look to make those picks a little bit more often, and let's see where they look to make the plays. Caps has TP, he's currently in the bot side of the map. There's a bit of grouping up in the mid lane for both teams. But it looks like with no major objective, Genji right now are just doing what they can to hold the line and protect this mid tier one. And they'll be able to do it. Still uh, was it was unfazed by the fact the Rift Hold was used there just a little bit earlier. Rascal working his way down here. Now he won't be spotted out by too many wards. I think there's one just around where the Razor Beaks would be, but already they're looking for perks. The Solar Flare comes down. Mickey still has the Devourer here. Cleared with a spear from long range. Teleport coming in from G2 as they try and join the fray. That's Destiny from BDD. Life a little bit overextended. The rest of his team not there to help him. Life shut down by the Jin. One, two, three, four, and the fourth find its mark. Cleared goes golden, but he goes down as well. Caps is unstoppable, and G2 collapse on the play from Genji. Caps with the great predict on the flash from Clid uses his Q over the wall so that when Clid flashes over, Caps is actually able to get the execute. He still has the Ash arrow. He's looking for a pick and he's found Rascal. What is that damage from the Kingslayer in the arrow? Rascal locked out of the hook shot. Won't go down as a chain lash. Will not follow him over the wall, but G2. Already coming up trumps in this game. There's the Tom Kent's trying to get onto a ruler who uses the blast cone to escape the mid lane tower falls. And it was just even gold a moment ago, Betty, and now G2 having two and a half thousand gold advantage. And, and it's a situation where Genji is. Oh, Rascal's going for the flank. Who's he looking for? It's gotta be Perks. Perks still has the flash though. Out. The sleep goes down and Rascal hook shots, wall dives, and dies to Yankos. The red smite, uh, blue smite doing his work there as Yankos gets the kill. Now they're still on the chase. BDD has to flash away. Caps with 22 stacks, just needs to land. A single abducted, he dives underneath the tower and Clint is already down. Devour will spit Caps out and Wonder tanking up the flurry of arrows that comes out of the ash. G2 are gonna turn and burn. Baron not even up yet. Wow. <laughs> I can't believe G2 are just consistently getting these kills and like I just have to raise question marks around what Genji is trying to do here. Last game we saw how you use this Twisted Fate combo. You look for... This is just trying to force a fight in the mid lane. Like they're going for a 5 versus 5 here. TPs are up, Shen Ultimate is up and like BDD gets here late but... Like, the Camille isn't even in the fight yet, and they tried to commit so hard. And here's that predict from Caps over the wall, uses the Q, gets the predict, and is able to find that execute. But, like, this isn't how you use this comp. You can't just try and force the 5v5 like that, because especially at this point in the game, we just talked about all those items that came through for, Gen uh, for G2. I felt like that they were just in a much stronger position. You need to be trying to play through the Camille on a side lane, trying to look for these targets or stragglers that are caught out of position, trying to find these collapses, maybe even try to collapse on the Shen, but just trying to force that mid 5v5, I feel like 
it was never really going to pan out in your favor, yep. and the execution just kind of fell apart. So G2 just kind of took the free fight. They were able to come out on top, and Caps is just smurfing right now. Yep. He is just kind of playing with his food on this Silas. Having an absolutely stellar world so far is Caps. BDD has been struggling, I think we have to say. Hasn't been able to in have this the impact. Matchup specifically. In this matchup specifically, yeah. Hasn't been able to have the impact that he would like on these games. They look to Ruler once again. 3-3-1. Three, three, Averages over a third of his team's damage in every single game. Has two items here. And if anyone's going to be able to carry them out of this hole, it is the guy that has been with this team the longest. Remember, Ruler, a world champion, Vedius. Was with, part, was with Samsung, who changed to Gen.G in 2017 when they beat G2 in the group stage. Ruler has been here a long, long time, and a lot of people consider him up there amongst the best AD carries in the world. For sure. Definitely, and I mean, like, we, we only have to look at this laning phase, and we saw how talented of a player Ruler is. Like, some of the situations that he was able to turn in his favor was just so well done. But here comes the sleep now from Yankos. Instant cleanse from Ruler. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? Oh, Mikaos. Uh, Clid has Mikaos. Oh, Clid, Clid, Clid. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I Clint thought it was life. Yeah, both yeah, of Yeah, we both looked at life, and cleanse, then we looked for the QSS. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Caps. Now towards the bot side of the map, G2 going to look to secure the first Infernal of the game. Gen.G now towards the top side, and this is a situation where they could look for a pick onto Wonder. Doesn't have Flash, but BDD currently in the mid lane, so it looks like he's going to be safe for now. But if you're Gen.G, you actually get into a really tricky spot here, because the hope would be that you can kind of split the map up, you can have Rascal pushing in the side lane, and then someone can answer Caps' pressure. But you can't right now. Like, BDD is so far behind Caps that if he ever oversteps, he's just going to get deleted. And you can see they're having to move life down towards this bottom lane as well, which leaves you undermanned on the rest of the map. Now Caps with the Destiny can join any fight he wants. His teleport is almost off cooldown as well. It becomes so hard for Gen.G to pull around the map and find these picks they were looking for. I mean, the, the terrifying thing about this comp, right? Like, we haven't even spoken about Mickey, but we did yeah. see how he used his ultimates to actually join the mid lane fight. And one of the core cool things, and I think one of the things we don't really appreciate is while Genji want to try and look for picks, it's, it's actually very ready. difficult because of things like this, the ability to collapse very quickly and for G2 to actually look for these same responses. So every time Genji try to attack a side lane, Gen G, uh, G2 can actually collapse very fast. So here's the thing, Caps doesn't have TP, it's just come off cooldown. Mickey has to go back beneath the tower. You can see Caps was walking down through that bottom lane. Destiny was popped by BDD to get to that fight, but I wonder perhaps if Gen.G had a small moment, a small opportunity there to try and jump on G2. Thinking more about it, like I'm, I'm understanding this comp a lot more from G2, and uh, like I can kind of understand a little bit more why Gen.G tried to force that fight in the mid lane, because like, how do you attack the side lane? Like, there's a Shen ultimate, and there's a Tom Kench ultimate, and Caps can just steal Destiny too. Yeah. So like, you try to pick, catch a pick, oh, three people on a side lane. Well, G2 can have four. And like, you might just have to force yourself into these awkward fights because when you want to utilize the strength of your composition, I think it heavily gets mitigated. So, you know, in the draft phase, we, we were kind of like trying to figure out what the goal of G2's comp was. But when we think about it a little bit more, I think actually the whole purpose of it is to shut down this Camille Nidalee Twisted Fate combo. And so far, they've done a great job. And as you say, Caps is now strong enough where he can just go for this 1v1. Flashes in with the Hexa Automated. He's going to lock Rascal down in the cage. Counter use as Wonder comes in with the, oh, the Stand United. That's already one kill to G2. Rascal unable to get away, and now five members strong. G2 could look to push in. This is a cannon wave. Only ruler cleared life here. BDD does have TP. He's going to back first. But this inhibitor tower might be forfeit for the time. It takes G uh, Gen G to get back on the map. Inhibitor tower goes down. Perk stepping forward once again. BDD locking in the gold card, looking for a man to catch. The inhibitor tower does fall as G2 decides to back away. You know, we talked about looking for picks on a side lane. That was a good one from Caps. Looking to punish Rascal down towards the bot side of the map. Didn't even have an opportunity to flash because he was locked down by his own ultimate. Yep. And uh, 25 stacks on the Mesh Eyes. Here we Very go, cool. the curtain call comes through. They're trying to burn Ruler's Flash here, but he can just step behind Clid and Life. Didn't find the mark. Swell Seed only hits onto Clid. But look at the damage from Perks. The Seek's going to come out. BDD on the backside of this fight. The Devour used onto Perks. He's going to have to try and get away because here comes Rascal. No Ultimate on the Camille, but Mickey the first target. Using the thick skin, trying to survive. He manages to, even through the Ignite. Now Life is down, and Yankos stepping forward. The Sleep's already been used, but Ruler being chased off. The arrow goes wide. Almost sniped by his own shot there, but couldn't quite hit it. BDD taunted underneath the towers. Wonder flashes forward. Perks goes in with the final shot. 
and it will find its mark. Two quick kills to G2. Another big team fight that goes in G2's favor, and they're only going to continue to snowball the gold lead. And it was another situation for Gen G. It just felt like desperation. They're running out of options. They're running out of time, and they tried to force that fight. And G2 just so quickly collapse and turn it in their favor. They're going to continue to extend the goal lead. Not going to go for the Baron, though. feel like it's a little too risky at this point in the game. Instead, just going to catch waves, look to reset. They may even catch Rascal out here. Rascal underneath the tower. Watch out as Clip comes in as well. But Rascal is actually almost dead as Perks just steps forward. That was just bad from Rascal. You're greeting for a single tower. That's 40 seconds that your team doesn't have you. And now the Baron very much on the menu for G2. It certainly is, Medic. That's a good call there. Rascal, with the huge mistake, ends up getting punished. Clit tries to defend him. And now G2 can quite easily set up for this objective. They have more than enough damage. Caps is going to be the bodyguard as he looks for a pick onto BDD. It's two levels up. He will be spotted out, but what a monster performance from the man in the mid lane as G2 looks to continue this snowball. I'm kind of just like, I'm thinking more about it. I'm. I'm really impressed with the preparation that G2 have come in because, you know, again, when we looked at that draft, we were like, wow, G2 just going to give it over. They're just going to give away what they played so well in game one. But it feels like that they came in well prepared. They had a very good answer. And like, just, let's just look at this fight. So it's Gen G that collapsed first, but the Tom Kench mitigates the pick potential. Tom Kench is also tanking up a lot. And then one is able to join. Oh, hang on. Mick has been caught out. BDD going on the chase. They want to wonder. Yankos trying to join the fray. It's Caps not able to join this fight yet. You can see Yankos almost down. Life on the front lines. Gonna get slept, but he can use the Gargoyle Stoneplate to heal himself back up. Now it's a great fight for Gen G as they push forward, but the Solar Flat finds three on the back line. It's a double for Caps, and the curtains have opened. And perhaps this is the encore that Perks was looking for. BDD sniped down a triple for Caps. Add more pages to the book as the Medjai Soul Stealer is all the way up to 25. <laughs> I think. I think that was a Leona ultimate, but with all the yep. AP of a Yes, Silas. it was! The power <laughs> of a thousand suns! <laughs> and Caps just blows up the back line. Wow, okay, so what was a terrible fight for G2 ends up being swung off the back of Caps' beautiful play there. The death cap coming in clutch, and like you can see that Gen G. I understand more why they're trying to go for these fights. Like you can and the start of that fight was so good. Yeah, and they were able to get that pick onto Mickey. And, and, and when we get the replay, we'll be able to see like he was caught out of position. And then like let's let's keep a track of Caps here. So he steals away the Leona ultimate. He's gonna throw it onto the back line. Look at the damage! He, <laughs> he takes half the HP off of three members. He even gets a kill off the back of it, and then that's immediately all that they needed. <laughs> oh, wow! I have not seen that before. But uh, yeah, late game Silas. Yep, and now with this uh, Red Bull Baron of Power Play, G2 continue to take down at structures. Solar Flare is going to hit on towards the back line. That's Perks caught out, but you can see life almost down before you can even get out of the fight. Ignite taking on Caps, using the stopwatch to dodge the spear. He's going to come back up, and with the ammo, oh my god! Oh, that is disgusting! That is the most illegal ammo I have ever seen. Clint dives in, Rascal dives in, but they're already done, and Caps is still alive, and he's almost back up to full HP. Ruler, the last man standing, and what a fated end it is for Gen G as he goes down. Another triple for Caps, and G2 against their own composition slap it right back in Gen G's face. This has been once again a demolition from the LEC number one seed as they go 2 0 up versus Gen G. Claps is here to play, Medic, and what a fantastic game two from him. Really showcasing the strength of this Silas and why it can be such an effective pick into the Twisted Fate. And I'm really looking forward to hearing more from the analyst desk so that we can get a little bit more insight on these drafts. Because, like, again, I think that the response was extremely well done from G2, the way in which they answered. And, like, you know, I was questioning, like, why are Genji trying to force these 5v5s? Why are they going for them? But it felt like that Genji recognized much earlier than I did the situation that they were in, and the only way they could actually turn this game around was off the back of that. And again, like, we're seeing such good laning from the side of Gen G, yeah. but it's really not being converted into a lot in the mid game. And I feel like the traditional. Uh, Traditionally, they would get a lot of these good fights around the dragons, but like we haven't seen a dragon fight like once in this whole series. So many of them are happening in the side lanes, in the mid lane, around things like towers, picks. Like, I mean, you compare this to yesterday's series where we saw front to back 5v5s 
at least twice a game. Like right. it was so consistent. Here we are just never seeing them. It's all picks, it's all skirmishes. Yep. Maybe that mid lane fight you could count it as a 5v5, but it's really not the way that G2 and Gen G are playing. But while we wait for game three, listen to KDA's pop stars from Spotify's official League of Legends playlist during our Spotify song break. Back to the LDC Interview Studio here in Berlin, Law, joined by Lucy. And Lucy, for those who don't know her, she is the LDC Scout Analyst for G2 Sports. Thank you very much for joining me. It's so nice to see you again. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's amazing to see you again. So for those who don't know your job at G2, can you explain a bit what is a Scout Analyst, please? Uh, so I'm basically responsible for preparing the team for the opponents that we'll be playing against mm -hmm. so that the players know the the tendencies that the team play against and basically just have an idea of what they're playing uh -huh. against so they have no surprises and they can detect what map movements they will do. All right. Well, I know that usually on socials you're very passionate or vocal about your team's performances, whether they succeed or run it down. So since the beginning of World Championship, how do you think about G2? Uh, I think we had our very clear G2 moments. Uh, we had some good moments and some moments where we kind of run it down. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's expected when watching us. You know, we give our fans a bigger heart attack and anxiety attacks when watching us. 
but overall I think that we are improving very well as a team mm -hmm. here in Worlds and I'm very happy with the sort of performance that we are showing. How is it for you so far? Because I know the, the year has been strange as a whole, but I mean, you're also helping the team remotely here. So how does this work exactly? Yeah, so I'm incapable of watching any of the scrim games mm -hmm. because obviously they're in China and it's very different time zone. So most of my work and communication of how the team are doing in China kind of goes through Doffman. So I know that what we're doing well, what isn't going well in scrims and so where to focus my um, scouting for the team and for the next opponents. Okay. Okay, now thinking about Genji, it looks like it's an easy series so far from you guys, but we'll see about the last game. But okay, talking about the draft here, you went in a totally different direction because uh, Genji went with Camille first pick, which means that you went for Lilia and Shen. So you actually led them the first three pick that you had for game one. Can you explain maybe the reasoning behind this? Yes, so um, they basically did copy our game one draft. <laughs> at least the top side. Um, but I think that we had a very good answer to it. I mm -hmm. think Shen into Camille was something that we played in LEC uh, quite often. And we think that Lilia is probably a higher prior than uh, Nidalee mm -hmm. in this meta. And Silas is obviously a good uh, pick into TF because you can steal the TF ult. So it's a very good sort of uh, counter to what they try to do. Uh -huh. Um, because when Camille will try to go into side lane, Shed can ult into the team fight on the other side of the map. And likewise, if you match Silas into TF, then Silas can steal the TF ult and then join the t fight as well. So you'd always have sort of the same number mm -hmm. or a number advantage when fighting. And it played out so well for you. I mean, Caps, this game? What did you think about his performance? It was insane. <laughs> I think Caps is definitely in his element. Um, you know, when he buys Medjai's and he manages to stack it to 25, <laughs> he is for sure in his comfort zone. Um, he even tried to go for the two dark steals at the start. So it just really shows he's really comfortable on this champion and just in general in this series. I mean, the, the whole team feels on the same phase here. Do you have any expectations for the last game and at least the third game? Because we don't know if it's going to be the last one. Yeah, I don't want to see a repeat of uh, yesterday. So uh, I think I don't want the guys to get cocky. I uh -huh. don't want them to get ahead of themselves. I still want them to respect the uh, enemy and what they are able to do. But I do think that we have shown to sort of counter everything that they have to show. So I think we're in a very good spot right now. But you never know what Genji are going to throw in last second. Yeah. We'll see that in a few minutes. But Lucy, thank you so much for all these insights. And we're going to take a short break and we'll thank see so in a couple moments if G2 can close out this series against NG. Stay tuned.